Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out some PS2 emulation on the Raspberry Pi 5. And yes, yeah, some games can actually run at full speed here. Now I tried everything to get this working. We're going to be using EtherSX2. I personally couldn't do it, but Lee PSP video over on YouTube hit me up. He figured out how to do it, gave me all the steps to get this up and running. And I do want to give him a big shout out. If you're into the Raspberry Pi, be it uh, software, hardware, Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry Pi 5, emulation, desktop operating systems, definitely check his channel out. I'll leave a link in the top of the description. He's been nothing but a huge help to me over the years when it comes to the Raspberry Pi. Things that I can't figure out, he's usually got some kind of fix or he just goes through and does as much research as possible and basically figures it out. He's got lots of awesome tutorials and I highly recommend checking out his channel. Okay, so I'll show you what's going on here. As you can see, we're on the Raspberry Pi 5. This is the 8 gig model, and I am overclocked on the CPU to 3 gigahertz, also overclocked on the GPU to 1000 megahertz. This does make a huge difference. I'm also running my operating system from an external SSD because our write and read speeds are way up with the new I.O. in the Raspberry Pi 5, and it's miles ahead of a micro SD card. Go ahead and start up EtherSX2, and I'll show you what kind of settings I'm using here. So from emulation, I'm actually at 100% normal speed, and I've got the EE cycle skipping disabled. For some reason, with the Raspberry Pi 5, it doesn't seem to make a huge difference like it does on other devices. I've tried all kinds of different combinations, underclocking the cycle rate, overclocking the cycle rate, mid-underclock on the cycle skipping, and usually we can introduce a little bit of skipping to some of these games. Now that'll lower the FPS, but it does make it feel a lot smoother. Unfortunately, on the Pi 5 right now, uh, I don't know what it is, it's not making a huge difference at all. From the graphics, rendering, we're gonna be at the native PS2 resolution. I also have uh, all of the OSD information on screen so we can see what's going on. But yeah, I've actually been seeing some really interesting results. But one kind of letdown here is that EtherSX2 isn't under active development anymore, which means we're going to be using an older build. Hopefully in the future, somebody comes up with something, a different emulator for PS2 in Linux. But uh, you can actually download this directly from the EtherSX2 website. It's the Linux desktop app image. Now there is a possibility that with improved Vulkan drivers on the Raspberry Pi 5, we may see an increase in performance but I wouldn't expect EtherSX2 to be updated. That's really not going to happen, at least for the time being. But either way, I wanted to show you what kind of performance we're working with right now. And you can see my desktop resolution is actually at 1080, and we're going to leave it there for this first game. I dropped it down to 720 with the rest of the games we're going to be testing. I did see a 3 to 6 FPS jump in some of these games, and it might be the placebo effect. I might just be kind of looking at things a little weird. But with the rest of the games we're going to test, I'm going to be at 720. But this first one, we're going to keep the desktop resolution at 1080. And we're going to go with Kingdom Hearts 2, if I can find it here. Vulcan back in. And we're actually seeing some decent performance. This ran natively at 30 FPS on original PS2 hardware. We're right there at 30. Got a few dips here and there. Not too bad. This game is definitely playable on the Raspberry Pi 5 right now with Ether SX2. So let's move on to another one. Here's Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. This is another easier one to emulate. And I thought that I'd be able to upscale to 720 with this or at least 1.5 hex. But going up there does dip it on down. And as you can see, we still fluctuate under 60 with this one. It's really coming down to the GPU right now. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 getting some great performance and as I was testing this one out I kind of got lost in the game played it for about 20 minutes. But yeah this one is really playable on the Pi 5. Looking pretty decent at 1x. I mean, it would be nice to be able to upscale this stuff, but we're working with a low-powered ARM single-board computer.
I also tested Bully, and this is another one that ran at 30 FPS on original PS2 hardware. We're right there on the edge. You can see it kind of fluctuating, but if I didn't have that frame counter on, I wouldn't notice the difference. It's another one that we can kind of check off here with the Raspberry Pi 5, at least at the time of making this video. Here's Twisted Metal Black, and every once in a while with this game, it would fall right on its face, as you can see here. But you wait a few seconds, it'll catch right back up. And, uh, you know, each time I loaded the level, it would do this. But from now on, through this level, we're actually seeing some good performance. I mean, it's definitely not at full speed, but it's running much better than I thought it would. These Dragon Ball games are usually pretty easy to emulate, and I figured we wouldn't have an issue here seeing the performance we got with Crash and Kingdom Hearts 2, but unfortunately I can't get this one to run at 60 FPS. And, and you know, I went through, tried a bunch of hacks, some cycle skips, nothing really gives us better performance with this one. Another one I wanted to show you was Gran Turismo 4. This is one of my favorite racing games still. This is the best I could get it to run, and you might notice there's no other cars on track, and that's because as soon as we get view of another car, or even our own car, by changing our camera view, you'll see that frame rate dips way down. And the uh, GS usage, or the GPU usage, goes way up. So what's really holding this back isn't the CPU. Of course, it'd be nice to have a little more power there also. But right now, it is the GPU holding us back, and I really do think it has to do with the Vulcan drivers. Because the last one I wanted to show off was one I know somebody was going to ask about, God of War 2. This is the best I could do with the game on the Raspberry Pi 5 right now. Very far from playable, and again, just like most of the other games, I went through, tried a bunch of different hacks, nothing could get a better frame rate than we're seeing right now. The way things are right now, the Pi 5 can emulate some PS2 games, as you saw with this video. It's not going to be the best option to do so, we're not going to get any upscaling, and I'm not sure how much performance we're going to gain in the future, given the fact that the Ether SX2 emulator is no longer under development. Would have been nice to get some optimization specifically for the Pi 5. I think drivers may help, but in the long run, I don't think the Pi 5 is really going to get us where we need to be with PS2. It's cool that we can actually play some of these games at full speed on a Pi now. And we could be totally wrong about this. I mean, next week, somebody might be emulating all these games at 1080p. I really doubt it, but you never know when it comes to these single board computers. Things happen quickly. Sometimes things don't happen at all. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out some Switch, GameCube, and Wii emulation on the Raspberry Pi 5, check out my last video. I'll leave a link for it in the description. And again, I want to give Lee PSP video over on YouTube a big shout out. Link for his channel is down below. If you're interested in anything Raspberry Pi, he definitely has you covered. So I really do recommend checking that channel out. But that's going to be it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.